This conference will now be recorded. So I'm fixing to do a video. You know, we talk about how important the scanning offset adjustment is. And uh, one of the machines that Grant is using uh, in Quitman, uh, they didn't have the card. And at that time, Thunder didn't keep the data. Now they do. There's a folder for every machine that's ever made that I can get access to that has the serial number, the power output, all of the, the QC reports, uh, all the parts, everything, the scanning offset. So we've got access to that now. But Grant and I did it from scratch where we would just basically just cast a wide net, start putting in numbers in the scanning offset adjustment and visually walk it down. Because who's got, you know, a caliper and a jeweler's loop that wants to sit there and try to measure that stuff. And ultimately, you're looking for the best visual output anyway. So we did it by eye and it came out great. So we're going to do a video on how to actually generate your own uh, scanning offset, you know, and put the template up there for it. So I think that'll be cool because, you know, not right now people don't need it. But once you've had your machine a couple of years or you tighten a belt or you change a motor or you do something like that, anything to the you know, to the motion control components, then it's probably a good idea to recalibrate that and get new offsets because the backlash and stuff changes. So I'm going to get with him and put that out in the next couple of days. It went real smooth. So good. You know, I, I, I recently did that just last week just to see if my offset had changed at all. And I've had that, uh, that machine for what, about 10 months now. And mm -hmm. it was right on the money. I mean, there was, I didn't look like yeah. I needed to change it at all, which was nice to see. Mm hmm. And you, I have not had one call of except Grant of somebody saying, hey, I don't have my card and my machine, you know, uh, isn't outputting the way it should. You know, so they seem to be pretty, pretty good, even with motor swaps. I mean, we've sent out motors and never had to do it, you know, wow. but, but, you know, uh, I would assume that some at some point that would is going to become necessary. So it'd be a good video to have. So it's more you use it. Yeah, absolutely. So how's everybody? I got some good news the other day. Okay. My laser, my laser is in the country, and <laughs> apparently will be in Minnesota on Monday, and then they'll schedule the delivery. So it's nice. uh, on its way. All right, you're I'm ready, excited. aren't you? I'm I'm mostly ready. I have <laughs> got a little plywood to get out of the way uh, this weekend, but now that I know it's here, you know, fire's under my butt. So cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I uh, hope to get here before Christmas, and looks like I got my getting, getting my wish. So that's that's neat. Yeah, we were talking about that, you know, yeah. that, that last time. So yeah. I'm glad that's going to be. I don't good. know if I have time to make any ornaments or anything, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing good. How about you? I'll hang it in there, man. Like a chicken yeah, with not... my head cut off. There you go. I'm, I'm not going to get mine before this Christmas. So, <laughs> yeah, but early it? March. Yeah, early March. you'll have plenty of time to kick into the Christmas spirit early. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have there. plenty of time to make ornaments. <laughs> yeah, you'll have uh, <laughs> plenty. You, you ordered a 51, right? Yeah, 51, 130. Gotcha. So, yeah. Ryan, it looks uh, like you upgraded your camera gear and your headphones. You're like, like got the bokeh, the depth of field going on. You got like the fancy blue LEDs on your headphones. Yeah, like, I totally just so I don't have to clean up my workspace back there, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the headset does help. But, um, so there's something else I've been thinking about. If nobody has any questions, I think I'm going to put out a series of, uh, see, so you run into this stuff where we need to check continuity sometimes. Uh, on some of these things. Some people don't even know how to use a meter. So I think it could be a valuable tool to put some basic troubleshooting skills together and keep them on the, uh, you know, just because I need to add some more crap to my plate. Uh, I have this <laughs> list of things that I want to do. Uh, and I think that's one of them for the first of the years. I want to put together a troubleshooting series of tutorials on just basics, you know, uh, so they can follow along because we've got diagrams, but that's pretty much it. I tried to explain a few of them uh, and it's not super complex, but um, it can get pretty weird in there. So I was thinking about some stuff like that because there's been times we've had to actually call and I try to think outside the box. We've had to call an electrician one time for a power problem and, you know, cause they just weren't able to, to do it. The end user wasn't. Um, 
but I called a car stereo guy one time because, you know, a lot of this stuff's 24 volt and they know about things. And this was a sensor swap and that's a good solution. So we're trying to think outside the box when we do run into a situation that can't be handled remotely. So that's my thought so that we can have everybody a little bit more prepared, not with just the information, but how to apply it. So that's one of my goals. Just one. Yeah, I'm uh I've appreciated the various like videos you put out already and like it kind of just reaffirms my decision to go with Thunder, like seeing the stuff you have planned too. Uh well, for... my goal's to beat Ridge my goal's to beat Robert this year. Uh, we're we're gonna have a YouTube battle. He's gonna win because well, I never have time to do anything. <laughs> well, I've got a battle too, so I, I have a couple videos planned when I get my laser too. So good. Good. Robert and I can maybe take some stuff off your plate for the <laughs> there you go. There you go. I kind of shoot from the hip. I'll just make stuff up as I go along. I think I told you, like I uh, I recorded I recorded myself like doing the the ventilation mm -hmm. uh, for my my garage and stuff, and like that's like a video I like was hoping existed at the time, and I couldn't find anything like it, so I kind of had to do a bunch of little research on every individual part, and then like part of that yeah. project and. And so, yeah, I figured I'd put it all in one spot for any yeah. laser user. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Robert's video about the fan thing is good for that inline fan. I need to get somebody with a dirty uh, CTZ 550 or whatever it is to do one, too. So that'd be a neat addition. So is that the, the really loud yeah, fan? That's that the centrifugal, the green one. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I I don't know if this is what you're talking about, but the the makerspace laser that I've used um, over the years, uh, that fan is located in like a, you know, like an old like warehouse where there's like a foreman's office, like in the middle of the shop or mm -hmm. and then it's kind of enclosed and you can store stuff above it too, before like the main gotcha. ceiling. It's a similar situation like that. So the exhaust fan for the laser room is in that little office and the, the exhaust fans over the office. And one time I was like using the laser and all of a sudden, smoke was not ventilating at all out of the room. It was like building up in the room. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, sorry, I still mean to swear <laughs> on here. Uh, and I went and talked to someone and sure, like apparently happens where it gets clogged. And so I had to climb on top of this office and like scrape all the crud off that like triangular grate that mm -hmm. like builds up. And so like, I've had to do that multiple times, like after learning about, <laughs> cause it, it apparently it's really problematic. Like after people cut acrylic, because it uh, yeah. forms like more of a uh, gummy, um, like all that well, powdery builds any, up with the fat. Any and, engineered lumber is going to have all that too with all the adhesives and stuff. So yeah, yeah. it's some sticky, yeah. nasty stuff. Well, there was a picture I was trying to find of a guy on another group. It wasn't a Thunder-related group that has the same fan. It's pretty common. Uh, is it? And you, you should have seen it. It was insane, man. Yeah, it looks like a cake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah, so bad. It. Like, yeah. Is so. is that like something that I should be aware of with like the inline AC Infinity fans? Like, does it build yeah. up on the propellers or? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Have you seen Robert's video? It, it's similar to the AC inline. They're built the same. The cloud okay. lines are built the same. The whole fan assembly has got a DC motor and it's all in the center and it just slides out once you move the, once you get the clamps off of it and it slides right out. You can clean it so easy. You can take it out to clean it. Gotcha. I'll check that out. Um, Ron, do you have anything? Other Ron. <laughs> Other Ron. That's right. How are Ron we going to do this? <laughs> Ron K uh, and Ron FN. Yeah. Like you said, the first week, two or three of us that first week. I know. I, I, I never see Other Ron. So, like, when we were, like, overwhelmingly <laughs> represented, it was weird for me. Yeah. I really don't have anything this week. I'm just kind of following along to see, you know, mm -hmm. always looking to learn. Yeah. And I yeah. did enjoy Robert's video. Just a question on the uh, changing of the fans. Is that strictly a noise issue or is there actually an efficiency issue of the change into the, uh, the infinities? Well, it, actually, you lose a little bit of efficiency on the infinities if you go size for size that's why a lot of people you'll see go with an s8 or an s10 so they can get that extra flow uh the axial inline fans take a little while longer to spool up 
the centrifugal fans have a cap start motor on them and they actually get up to operating RPM pretty quickly, but it takes a little longer for the uh, AC Infinity inline fans, the axial fans to spool up. Uh, so there's a little bit more residual smoke at the very beginning, then it evacuates. But the fans that come with them are very much more than adequate for anything you would need. Uh, so it's mostly for noise. Okay, that's kind of what I was picking up from the from the Facebook face book. Yeah. Fa <laughs> yeah. Anyway, online. Yeah. Thanks. But, sure. Um, man, I'm kind of short on stuff today. My brain has been fried through the holidays. It usually <laughs> gets really busy this last quarter, and it's been running me nuts. So I don't even. Have. Yeah, a couple, couple of things you mentioned there, Brian. So you, sure. you mentioned uh, putting together like some of the uh, troubleshooting guides, you know, for checking continuity uh, with a meter. Um, something, uh, something else to think about, and uh, something I might be able to help with is, uh, you know, beginner-friendly multimeters, right? Instead of going with a expensive, overly complex one that has a bunch of features that they're not going to be able to use anyway. So, you know, a cost-effective, uh, you know product solution um, and recommendations there and then detailed how to on you know how to do basic things check voltage check polarity on your DC check continuity things like that mm -hmm. uh, how to read a schematic right, um, right. You know, as, I, as I mentioned uh, you know support uh, customers in electric propulsion on ships and quite often you, you realize you know how you're talking to someone and they don't have even you know the basic understanding of um of some of those troubleshooting skills yeah so yeah that's that's kind of along the lines as i was thinking so we might have to hire you <laughs> for some contract stuff <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll do it in my free time keep, keep wondering when i'm gonna get any of that but uh yeah right i'm kind of the same way so um, and if anybody, I think there's been a little bit of a hold on the, on the fiber. I, I think they're not, I think they're still tweaking some things, but it's still coming and I can't wait. So I've been excited yep. about that for a while. That's going to be a game changer. He did say it was going to be a Galvo head as well, right? It will be fully enclosed. Okay. I'm sure there'll be uh, interlock defeats. I hope so that if you need to do something yep. long, you'll be able to yep. do that without having a stick magnets on it or yeah. What, um, so. You know, uh, kind of what um, rating range are looking at 20, 30, 50 watt? Or I think they're any... looking at 30 watt right now. Uh, okay. And they'll look at other sources, uh, I'm sure. And even like on Odin, they're looking for a bigger source for RF because I think yeah. it's 30 right, right now. And they need to be up about 50 for those to, you know, really take off. So it's and have a little bit of that cutting the <laughs> Yeah, and you, you got to look at uh, who you're competing with too, right? And in, in that marketplace, and make sure that you can uh, you can offer something uh, comparable there that uh, get the benefits of the thunder, and you don't have to go buy the uh, the epilogue or you know something in right. that price point. Right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, Danny, how are you? <laughs> he you're on mute, you Danny. Off. Oh, he he said it might not work. Hang on, let me see if I can turn him on. Can I unmute Danny? Okay. <laughs> I sent an unmute request. It looks like you're still muted. There you go. Now okay. there. there we go. Uh, I think it's supposed to be in the end of January. My 51, 130. Okay. Just kidding, Jeremy. Just kidding. It's the end of March, I think, is when it's going to be there. <laughs> There you go. So, yeah, I, I I did talk to the sales team about whether you could buy a a, a place in line ahead or any way to expect that. <laughs> wasn't any of that. What I need to find is someone that had a 51 and 130 that you know did didn't get the rotary attachment or didn't get you know an additional head and see so if you couldn't incentivize them to wait a a little bit longer, but not been able to yet. <laughs> but I will, I will say that uh, I went down to Michael Garrett's and uh, down in uh, Roanoke Rapids. Couldn't have been nicer. He had he had a, a 51 130, and it was. I mean, I got to see it operate, and it's nothing like having being able to lay your hands on it before you get it. Mm -hmm. and, and you still got it, so I guess it was a it was a good experience, right? <laughs> it was real good. 
Good. Yeah, I'm glad. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah. Wow, I'm at a loss today, guys. It feels like a Friday for some reason to me. It does. Well, I've generated a few more questions that I want to throw at you. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, are y'all putting a inline uh, fan, exhaust fan, in addition to the one that comes on the machine? No. Typically, you'd have to do some real good matching there to keep uh, from just doing more harm than good on that. Uh, each of the machines comes with one fan. The Nova 24 normally and the Mini 60 come with the uh, – inline axial fan like robert describes in his video and shows and the nova 35 and oh you know what i'm sharing a screen and i don't have anything up there i've got yeah, uh, i like shrunk it way I down keep forgetting to, to turn that off i'm sorry um i'll show you real quick since that's up i might as well make it van make use of it so <laughs> this is the fan that comes with the nova 35 uh 51 and 63 and it puts out almost 483 cubic feet per minute so it's you know plenty uh it's just a little noisy so that's why people go to those others now that one that robert has and the nova 24s is an inline fan now it's not really sold as an ultra quiet but evidently it's quiet enough because no one ever replaces those that i know of with with another fan with a cloud line just because they're already you know super quiet so and they move about 323 this one shows robert is yours dual dual speed no, I don't believe so. Okay. Some of them used to be dual speed. I don't think they are now. I'm going to assume that they're going to go with the high only number at 323. And I don't know if you've got a sticker on yours that you could verify that or something at some point. You don't have to do it now. But um, but this was the one that, that, that I have data on, and it was a two speed. It actually had a, a selector on the on the wire. But either way, that, that'll be very similar to what comes with the Nova 24 and the, and the 60. And typically just one is okay. Uh, if you're running a really long run, there's a whole lot more caveats to it than just popping in a booster fan. Uh, but there are occasions when that becomes necessary. Uh, but I'd probably leave that to some certified HVA duct uh, guy or something that knows more about the mechanics of airflow and, and all of that stuff, if you're going to get that complicated. Is this going to be a six-inch line for, for me? It is. All the right. Nova Series machines have six-inch diameter output ports. It's 5.7, but the six-inch U.S. version stuff works just fine. With an eight-inch, can I enlarge my exhaust pipe to an eight-inch? Uh, you can. I, I just happen to have some extra uh, duct left over from my dust collector, mm -hmm. and it's heavy and, and what have you, an eight-inch, and I'd like to use it. I'm going to have to pipe it about 15, 15 20 mm -hmm. feet. Yeah, you can. I mean, you'd probably, I don't know that that would be too far even for six, but if you have it, you can add a reducer and absolutely, you know, as bigger you can get it. I mean, of course you can get too big and it doesn't matter after that, but especially if, if that stuff has that helix in it, if it's that flexible pipe uh, and if it's not rigid, then bigger is usually better even for shorter runs. Well, so, it is, this is rigid. This is, oh, is the, the, the steel with the clamp. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, if you're going to run rigid, yeah, absolutely, you can do that. Okay. That shouldn't be a problem at all. all one right. thing, oh, sorry. I was just going to say one thing I noticed, I saw a post uh, on the Thunder Group the other day about the difference in efficiencies uh, on that corrugated duct, whether it was scrunched up or it was fully extended out, and they had some pretty sizable um percentages there so when i when i made that video the other day i had taken what they'd given me and just kind of scrunched it up and made it fit well i trimmed all that to where it was fairly full extended by the time i got it replumbed and surprisingly enough i believe i see a difference just in the airflow and my and my run is only probably oh maybe six to eight feet max um, but I had, you know, a, a 10 foot piece and it was all scrunched up into about a four foot run. And so I caught, uh, cut the majority of that out of there. And I do believe that it did help. Thanks. One other question I had, uh, Brian, is uh, those inline fans that come with the 24, are they readily available? Can I order one as a spare from either you or from Grant? 
You're on mute. mute. I'm mute, Brian. All, all of the machines come as kits uh, from China That with, with what's in the crate when you get it. Um, right. So those are all packaged up in China, and we don't typically keep spares. Um, they don't go out very often, and when they do, we find it's easier just to source one locally, but I can find some sources for those or similar ones. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to build up the things that if it does go bad, you're kind of down until you get another one. So I would be interested in, do they, uh, does the Infinity have a six inch? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's probably what I would do then. They do. Yeah. And then, of course, you just need a little IEC to a little 15 amp, you know, adapter, you know, to get out. And they use far less power than the, well, yours, yours ought to be about the same uh, power consumption because you already have a, a DC motor in yours, oh, yours right. you got that digital motor so yeah it, it should be real similar so I haven't looked at the specs on the uh, Cloudline S6 let's see what it is compared to uh, the data I have on that 150 uh, the S6 let me pull it over here and I don't know where my share button went again I still don't, I'm working multiple monitors here so sometimes it's a little goofy there's the screen share um, 402 cubic feet per minute. Wow. And this one max is 323. Yeah. So it looks there like you you'll get a good. It looks like you'll get a good boost there. Yep. Nope. That's good. All right. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So. Um. You know, like I say, I don't have much. Man, well, I'm not even 30 minutes into anything. I'm bombing this one today. <laughs> it's a smaller group than the last like few weeks, though, hasn't it? Like it is. the last few weeks, there's been like a bunch of new folks coming in. Yeah, probably just, probably uh, so many that I, I know. A couple times there were so many that we might not have gotten to everybody. So yeah, yeah. You just seem too efficient on the uh, on the forums. They're answering questions. Yeah. Right. That's you know, that is like a, a thing. Like if you if you get too many self help or self serve videos out there on the channel, like you're gonna cannibalize this webinar. So it'll have to be like a hangout <laughs> webinar instead of like a like a support webinar. Yeah. Virt virtual happy hour. Yeah, That's like funny. a Thunder users, Thunder USA user group happy hour. Yeah, it could be the water cooler. The yeah. Thunder Laser Water Cooler. We can all stand around. But, um, I'll have to when my laser comes off to like bring my computer out to the to the garage and like do the Thursday webinar from out there. Yeah. Like my laser in the background. I'm like right. Yeah, so, I'm excited. So, um, Been a long time coming. So so I, I got a question back. So um, I actually had to take a a customer phone call there so I missed uh, some of what uh, was being talked about there but you looked at the infinity and the cloud line inline fans mm -hmm. right was that correct was the two you were looking at the cloud was, line was the the higher yeah. CFM right there yeah let me yeah. Is it show? let me see let me go uh, back and go to a meeting share screen there we go should be back up in a moment so yeah that's the s6 and um, 32 dB and 402 cubic feet per minute, which is pretty good. And the yeah. other one was the, uh, it's a Vitronic, and it's probably got a couple of different stickers on it as they package them. Um, and again, you know, this is showing a two speed. I think they send a single speed now, so it should be around 320 CFM. So that's a pretty significant increase. I don't and what's, know the, uh, what's the cap start one that comes with it? That one oh, is this one. Just in CFM. Uh, 482 and a half. Okay. Yeah, see, because I, I was actually looking at keeping the cap start and maybe just uh, and I'm building like an, an insulated box around it to cut down mm -hmm. on this. I'm just going to put uh compressor, the chiller, everything kind of on a, a um, like bench with uh, casters on the back of the lay so I could move the entire unit as one with all the peripherals and everything. Mm -hmm. um, 
the issue I've ran into is the way I'm going to lay it out in my shop. If you're looking at the front of the laser, I need the exhaust to go 90 degrees to the right, right? which that fan is the exact opposite of what I needed. I was hoping I could literally just put the intake direct off the unit and straight pipe it you know, straight out the side there, but it's it gotcha. goes to the left instead of the right. I, I did look at um, whether I, uh, I mount it upside down. Right, and I'll hang it rather than set it. And looking at that, but I may just uh, go with a inline fan and uh, and look at putting the 90 or, or something on it there. Right. Because the, the problem I have with the inline, right? If it, you know, I was going to pipe it straight out the back, right? Which could do. I could put it up uh, close to the wall where the the cut through is going to be, but then you, you lose that pass through capability. Mm -hmm. Right. If we had the. Uh, I think I mentioned last week if the if the 63 had the full sheet pass through from left to right instead of front to back, then that, that would have solved everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you <laughs> got to have everything buttoned up around it if you're going to use the pass through. That's for sure. Yep. All the stuff on the back. So, mm -hmm. it's um, like cut, cut a hole in the side of your wall and go on the other side to feed the man, plywood. <laughs> we we I used to, I worked for a copier place for many many years and. Uh, I went out one time and they had a copier that the platen actually moved back and forth and it extended past the machine and they had it in this little closet and they literally did that. They <laughs> knocked that side wall out and just knocked a hole and just left, you know, just the guts of the building there so that that platen, it lacked about an inch of being able what to is, what do is the, the pass. It's the piece where you put the paper on and actually it would slide back and forth, you know, to scan instead of the scanning okay. mechanism scanning underneath okay. it. Like so it wasn't like entirely internalized in the case. That, sorry. Yeah. So the whole top the of it moved back and forth and it would bam, it would hit the side of the wall. So <laughs> they, they did exactly that. That's funny. So, it was insane. See, I, I looked into it with the, I'm sorry. the output of my, my, my planer is just, you know, spraying the shavings out in the yard. Right. And I, cause I've, <laughs> I've got a Dewalt 735 that's a, uh, got you know a decent little uh extractor and fan on it you don't need dust collection you actually uh need a place for it to accumulate or catch it so, so uh, just uh, squirt it straight out pipe it to like your garden bed or something there you go yeah. keep the weeds at bay as long as it's not like plywood glue or something yeah you. exactly <laughs> <laughs> the fan does it need to be attached directly to the machine or it can be it on the other side of the wall uh, to keep the noise down it can be on the other side of the wall ultimately you want it connected to the machine typically because it controls it turns it on and off automatically um, when the machine it. starts a job it'll automatically energize that circuit for the fan and you can extend it that's fine uh, and then after the job is complete it's on a timer and it'll allow the fan to stay on for 5 10 15 seconds whatever you choose it's set at 10 i think or 15 before it actually shuts down so it'll remove any residual smoke from the job uh, and if you want to if you don't want to lose that automation then you will need to connect it to the laser so if i get some what type of connector would i need to get just if i had seven seven or eight feet uh, yeah let me let me pull that back up again here let's see um Let's see. So it, the fan takes a standard IEC connector, which is the same thing you see in the back of your computer monitor or, or desktop PC uh, and other stuff. Now, you need to pay attention, though, and make sure it's at least eight, 18. I would prefer 16 AWG, honestly. Yeah. Um, but I think 18 will be all right for that. I think that's what's in there. But if you, you don't want too long of a run, they make extensions. Uh, you could buy, you know, one of these and cut the end off but now the end the, that's that's what fits into the machine so you don't want this bad things will happen if you buy one of these and stick it in the end of your machine because you're going to make those lugs live <laughs> because the part of the machine is the the male part of this you okay. see what I mean yep. um so let me find the right one but like they make an extension that's probably what I should have looked for is the extension and then it reminds me of the I've seen a lot of posts like on Facebook and stuff this Apparently this time of year, like Ace Hardware and Home Depot and stuff gets a lot of requests oh, for, like, for like a uh, the mail to mail adapter, mail -to -mail, does not exist. Uh, extension cord <laughs> adapters, <laughs> because of people yeah. like rolling their Christmas lights the wrong way, and then yeah. they're like, oh, I don't want to run an extension cord clear over there, 
I'll just get a mail to mail. Don't freak out. This is a hundred pack. I, I just happened to get to that. This is what I recommend for people to put a, an aftermarket fan on as long as it's, you know, doesn't require any more current than the stock fan. Uh, and that just plugs into the back of the machine and that'll let you use an extension cord or whatever you want to use uh, to adapt. Now, if you've got one of our stock fans, you'll have the mail into this on your fan. So in that case, you'll get an extension. It'll have one of these on one end and the opposite on the other. And you can just use an extension. Um, so or you can buy these, you know, you can buy these separate and, and actually fabricate your own. Um, uh, well, I need one of these to plug in the AC Infinity too, Brian. Yeah, you'll you'll want one of these. Do you want to buy hundred or just one? Can, Hang on. Can you post the? I won't buy a hundred, but can you post a link in the chat and then I can? Or uh, C14 yeah. Nemo. Okay. Well, let me find a one pack. So, so Ron, just go ahead and buy the the ten pack, and then you can send them out to everyone to stocking stuff yeah. for Christmas. It'll, it'll just be ten dollars shipping. Just send ten dollars shipping my way. There's the extension I was talking about. Uh, usually those little StarTech ones. I mean, here's another one. It's a five pack. Yep. But yeah. Yeah. They're they're there. Let me let me. Uh, computer power core ten pack. But would Michael Garrett have the fan on his? I I watched watched him run it, done a couple tumblers for me while I was down there, and he showed me some other things. Uh, the noise wasn't that bad. I mean, not um, I'm not sure which. I the back is just not it. I'm not sure which uh, which fan he's got. I'd have to I'd have to check with him. I would imagine it was the stock fan, but I have absolutely no idea, really. I'll uh, check here we go. Know. That's what I was looking for right there. That little dude right there, six bucks. I'll I'll copy it, and put it over here. Yeah, put it in the chat. Oh. Chat. Might as well get one of those before my laser gets here, yeah. and then I can't use it. I, I've got a I've got a link list also that I'm building for all the components. Yeah. Um, for all of the kits and for all these little adapters and stuff, so that it can be accessed more easily. So I'm working on that too. Cool. All of that stuff's in the works. Do Ron and I need a cap? It seems like we're the minority. Do what? Do Ron and I need a cap on? I don't have a hat on or anything. But we're kind of a minority. <laughs> wearing a cap. I got. I the, just did that. I don't have to do my hair. Me too. Yeah. That that and I got like the receding hairline at like age thirty one. So I'm like, eh. I need it. I haven't buzzed my head recently, so I use the hat to cover that up. <laughs> There you go. Glenn, Glenn jumped in without a cap on to, to even it up now. Thank you, yeah. Glenn. Brian, no, I'm sorry about that. Up. Am I supposed to, I don't have my hat yet. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. Uh, I wasn't sure if the uh, the laser came with the, the, the Thunder hat or not. I got a, a t-shirt. Rebecca sent me a t-shirt, Brian. So. Did she? Awesome. Yeah. So I'll, I'll wear my Thunder t-shirt in videos from time to time. There you go. There you go. Well, chiller I I, some of the discussion was when the chiller comes, it's set up to operate within what, five or ten degrees within the room temperature, and mm -hmm. you mentioned that that can be set to whatever te to maintain a particular temperature. What mm -hmm. the temperature? What temperature is optimum for that chiller to operate? I always set mine at twenty degrees, seven, okay. seventy degrees Fahrenheit, or, you know, twenty centigrade. Um, that tim that seems to be the industry standard. Uh, okay, seventy degrees then. Okay. And I've got a few of those articles about the chiller. I don't know if you saw them about how to select between constant mode and uh, constant mode, selecting intelligent or constant mode. There it is. But I've got a little video right. on it. Yeah, yeah I've heard the uh, some discussion on it, but uh, I wasn't sure uh, about the optimum operating temperature. So if it's 70, I believe that's probably what, because uh, I'm in a, a conditioned room, that's like probably 65 or so, I suppose. Gotcha. So, okay. so okay. yeah, you could run in intelligent mode. All that means is it'll stay within five degrees of the ambient temperature of the room, you know, and if yours is uh, conditioned, then you should be okay. Um, but I, I keep mine on constant because sometimes it's, 
you know, 40 in here and sometimes it's a hundred. So if you have it, if you have it in a real hot environment and you leave it on uh, intelligent, uh, if it's 90 degrees in the room, theoretically, the chiller could get to 95 degrees, although it has a maximum that it'll stop at. You know, it's got a, a max temperature that it will alarm at. But theoretically, that could happen. Uh, I, I prefer constant mode just because I like to keep it a little bit tighter on the frequency. I mean, on the uh, on the temperature. Yeah, that's, that actually makes sense. And mine wouldn't be worried about overheating in the room. Mine would be cooling in the room because if I'm sucking in outside air... In the winter time, uh, the room's going to be cooling off from that 65 and not heating up from it. So, mm -hmm. anyway, so. Brian, I have a question. I just kind of thought about when you guys talking about temperature and stuff. So, live in Minnesota. It's currently 28 degrees here. Um, when my laser gets here next week, uh, I imagine it'll been on a cold truck for a while. Um, how long should I like let it acclimate to like my say 65 degree garage before uh, like how plugging fast, it in? For... How fast can you get it put together and turned on? <laughs> Wait, so I can plug it in right away wait. with this yeah, with a cold? You don't, you don't have to wait. Really? I, I thought sure like it being cold like could be damaging to it. Not no? really. The only reason the cold's damaging to it, I mean, there are optimum temperatures, of course, that that stuff works at. But the only reason you don't want it to freeze is so that the water doesn't bust your tubes and your cooling systems. Mm. What uh, what was the reasoning for like making sure that my exhaust system doesn't like have a backdraft into the machine? Then was that for condensation or? Well, well, no, that was. Oh, I see what you mean. You're talking about ambient temperatures. Yeah. Yeah, no, the reason to have that blast gate or whatever is to make sure that, you know, or have it uh, dampened, you know, or whatever, is so that you don't get that outside air. But I'm, I don't know if I catch – are you talking about – I'm saying, like, the laser's been on a cold truck. Like, is there any – like, is there any danger in, like, plugging it in right away and trying to use it, like, after oh, no. it's been on a cold truck? Or should I, like, let it sit in the garage for, like – four hours before turning it on. Now, as soon as you put that distilled water in that chiller and kick it on, 20 seconds later, that whole system is equalized. Huh. So. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, <laughs> I, I never wait to let mine warm up or cool down or do any stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but you're in Texas, right? Like. <laughs> Tennessee. Yeah. Tennessee, uh, got it. Yeah. So. Okay. And if it, you know, if you, as long as your water's not like slushy, You'll be fine. <laughs> Should I put some antifreeze in it? No. <laughs> I don't know. That. Well, that'll mess up your conductivity of the water uh, no, if you don't I, watch I, it. It makes okay. it harder on the pump. Uh, yeah. I usually discourage it, but there are you know conditions when that's favorable. Yeah. I, very so, in general, so I guess just to put a bow on that, then what what is the like besides like just like letting my HVAC go up and out through the laser exhaust um, what was the like benefit of like making sure there's like a blast gate between the exhaust and the laser well when you turn your laser off at night it's still going to have water in it and if the inside of your laser gets cold enough it'll freeze the tube so you want to block the cold okay. air from the outside okay there we go that's that's the part I was missing <laughs> got it cool yeah, I don't think that would be an issue even if I didn't install Blastscape because, like, like I, I plan to keep the garage around 65 or so. So, like, oh, yeah. you don't to... have anything to worry about then. You know, I'll let mine get down to 40, you know, and then there's yeah. no problem. Um, and we, saw the, we, saw the, we saw the first electric bill since installing or turning on the, <laughs> the heater in there for the winter. And it, it's, you know, a little higher than we expected, but, like, yeah. it's we'll not see. terrible. Yeah, well, surprisingly, that heat will probably run you more than it will that laser. That laser just oh, yeah, not absolutely. Yeah. at all, really, yeah. uh, for what it is. Um, you got one of those, didn't you, with the, with the louvers? No, I got the, the, I got the rooftop version. That's the wall that's version. That's right, that you yeah. did. Okay. I, did yeah, the, you should... I think they call it a gooseneck. Yeah, it still had a, a flap in it, though. It still had a damper in it, yep. though. Yep, yep. Yeah. But the, the, I think I mentioned the dampener wasn't, like, super... Um, super, super, yeah. It wasn't heavy, so, like, like a... 
like a slight breeze like from the wind was like going in there and like lifting it up so what i want to do is like i want to i haven't connected the fan yet um but i want to connect the fan to it turn it on and then like maybe apply some magnets to the damper like from the outside like weigh it down enough that it stays closed when it's not the fan's not on but the fan can still lift it up so imagine every time you close your door and you hear it go (laughs) (laughs) i mean it's it's like above the insulated attic now so like i i can't hear through the insulated attic gotcha but right um yeah that's the way i'm setting mine up too so glad to hear somebody else is doing it seemed like everybody's venting through the walls i know like i was saying earlier like i i was looking for a video for some from someone who was like doing it that way the way i ended up doing it but i couldn't find any video so I recorded the footage of me doing it. I'm gonna post to my my YouTube channel, and I'm once I get my laser hooked up to it too. Yeah, I'm fortunate enough to have a friend that's uh, been in the roofing business for many many years, and <laughs> so he's and he knows a lot about venting and all that kind of stuff. So I, I had to watch. Him, he says, oh, "I'll come over and help you after Christmas." So cool. I, I had to watch like a ton of YouTube to make sure I was like not gonna screw anything up. It is way harder to dr- drill like a six inch hole through shingles than I ever imagined. Those suckers are tough. Like I bought like one of those like six inch hole saws drill bits from yeah. Home Depot. That, that saw that drill bit's like fifty bucks, and and the shingles just like destroyed the teeth on it. They're like not sharp at all anymore. Like <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I wish you'd have told me this before because uh, he's already gave me all the uh, basically told me what to do. He told me not to buy a wholesaler. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, he told me like trace it on the shingles first, because and then just cut them with a, a knife. A utility knife. And then and then drill a small hole and then cut the um with a um a scroll saw. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's yeah he's like he says oh hey, we'll have it done in just a few minutes. So I'm like, okay, probably yeah, would have been up there. Would have very... been up there all day scratching my head. I'm sure trying to make sure I didn't screw anything up. Well, not only was it an expensive hole to drill, <laughs> considering it destroyed the bit. But also, I tried to use my my cordless drill, and it went. I went through two drill batteries, and I wasn't even like a quarter inch into the roof roof sheathing before I like went to my neighbor's door and asked him if I could borrow his uh, powered, his like uh, uh, corded drill for that. Yeah, yeah, that's so. crazy. Yeah, there was yeah, somebody that did. asked him question about the uh, earlier in one of the forums talking about exhaust and they had a chimney uh, or a flu from something you know like a, a gas stove or a wood burning stove or something yeah. they wanted to use and that's actually a great you know as long as it's intact that, yeah, that's an absolutely. awesome thing if you have that you know you can just yeah. pop right into that so i mean yeah, yeah that's- I can, uh, replace my uh, window screen with a piece of plexiglass and uh, have the vent there so just close the window when i'm not using it Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. But yeah, I, I'm. I don't really have anything else. Um, has anybody got any last-minute questions? Glenn, you got anything? I have a question, but um, I got I I did build a little something in preparation. Um, you, one of you guys, I forgot who it was that mentioned. I was talking about putting my. I'm not actually put my fan up in my attic. Mm-hmm. And because um, I'm trying, you know, my best not to hear stuff uh, as much. And so somebody suggested I build a a box, a um, a filter box. I I did go over to Granger, and they don't really have anything pre-made like that. You'd have to get a couple of pieces, and I mean, put it together anyway. So I ended up. Um, let me see. Let's learn how to switch this camera around. I know I know I know I can do it somehow or another, but. Let's see. Oh, no, no, that's not it. Did I just? Yeah, you're still there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How do I switch this thing? I guess I'll just do it like this. But, uh, like it. That works. Yeah, that works. So I did this. Um, and I'm, I got the 8-inch fan, so I put um 6-inch over here, 8-inch there. Gotcha. And then um, I just did that. Mm-hmm. No, I guess. Hopefully y'all can see it, but yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm, I was gonna. I don't know if I should use two filters or one, so I just went ahead and made it for two. But yeah. um, 
hopefully that's kind of what you guys were thinking. It sounded like what you guys were thinking. Yeah, that'll help you from having to go up there and clean that fan out so often for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Sure. So I was just hoping that I was hoping that it, somebody wasn't going to say, "Oh shoot, that's going to choke it off too much" or something. You know, it's not going to it's not going to vent properly. Or... Yeah, that looks good. Um, yeah, we were talking about fume extractors the other day. There's a couple of people, and uh, we offered some of them, and I think uh, we've updated those. So, but man, I was looking the filters. Some of the filters last, they say one to three months or something like that. You know. But how long does it really last if you push your machine cutting acrylic eight hours a day? You know what I yeah. mean? Uh, you, you know, that can get pretty, you know, we I think we've sold one, maybe two. But when the fibers come along, you know, those those extractors are going to get a lot more popular because that small extractor is perfect for that, you know, to carry around. Because a lot of these guys carry these fi fibers to uh, gun shows and, you know, kiosks in the mall and, you know, things like that. And, and you can't really exhaust the normal way. So I have a feeling we're gonna see a, a, a little uptick in the uh, exhaust, you know, the extraction systems. Um, I don't know if you've seen them. Let me pull one up, I'll show them to you. Uh, support. I'm curious about like potentially like making mine like a dual, <laughs> like, like putting a Y connector or something on my laser to like choose whether it exhausts out the roof or exhausts through an extractor um because like once summer comes like and I, if i want to like use my ac and it, like depending on how much it sucks my ac out of the room while i'm using it like mm -hmm. like i i don't want to be like sweating out there while using the machine so um, yeah now i saw something and they did it in russia and they took and and molded injection molded or did something and made a piece to go over the front of their laser where those louvers are, you know, on that top. And they have a six inch, they have a nine, they have a, a six inch coming off of it 90 degrees. Let me see if I can find a picture of it. Um, well, anyway, there's the, there's the extractors. And, uh, how big but, is that? You know, um, that, that like one, the big one. Bridge? Yeah, I'd say it's, yeah. yeah, 420 by 420 by 520. Is that millimeters? So, yeah, it's millimeters. I'll I'll switch it over to uh, yeah, that's, Imperial that's one of these days. That's Twenty inches. Yeah. Uh, that man, I don't know where that was. It was um, it was a makerspace. I don't know if I'll ever find it, but they had. Let me pull up a picture of a machine. Thunder laser, <clears throat> like. Let's see. On the front, oh, they had, I think they had Nova 51s. So, yeah, they had this part that they just, looks like they attached on a VHB or something right on the front here. And it was mm -hmm. like, I don't know, Ron, were, weren't you weren't you into K40s? Didn't you do some K40 no. stuff? No. Okay. Uh, on the back of the K40, a lot of people 3D print these feet where they can come off of it 90 degrees and it's low profile. And it's kind of like that, but it just sticks on the front, and then there's a six-inch hose that attaches here, and you run it out, and that's your fresh air intake. So it comes in the louvers, and then you exhaust it back out. And that way you don't suck out your room air. Hmm. And they have a whole room of machines, and they all have those on them. <clears throat> Good idea. Yeah, it's pretty wet, pretty wild. I asked them about it, and they said, sorry, that's proprietary. I can't talk to you about it. I'm like, well, I understand. <laughs> but it's easy enough to replicate if you want to. I'll find some pictures and post it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I'd be so definitely interested in that. Come, yeah, same here. I'll, I'll make my... a draft real quick because I've got about 10 drafts of articles. <laughs> yeah, because the conditioned air, you know, it's expensive to mm -hmm. be pulling right outside. Yeah, so but like, yeah, like you said, the, the conditioned air is probably for me probably more expensive than running the laser. So, like, especially here in the winter because Minnesota, we it's going to get colder. Like, you know, <laughs> we right. get down to you know, the negative sometimes floats around zero. Yeah, I definitely have the opposite effect. I'm in South Florida, so it's going to always be hot. Um, it's yeah. in my I house, mean, but fortunately I can close that Florida room off. <laughs> I mean, we get, we get the worst of both. So like in the summer, like it'll be like average high eighties, nineties, sometimes in the hundreds. So, and humid because we have 10,000 lakes. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. 
Uh, well, I don't really have anything else. Does anybody else have anything before we go? I got one other thing, Brian. So kind of uh, along the lines of, you know, 3D printing and stuff like that. Um, do you know if there's models and you know, 3D models available in the Thunder world of, of the machines with like, you know, some of the key dimensions? I, I understand there's lots of you know, internal proprietary stuff, but, you know, because, you know, something I was thinking about, so I, I go lay my shop out and, you know, and position it into my 3D model there, right? And then I start looking at, all right, well, I'm going to mount my fan. And, it, mm-hmm. well, rather than waiting for everything to get here or just having like a block envelope of the equipment space, if there was, uh, you know, detailed models that showed high center lines of bolt holes and, you know, stuff like that uh, would make right. it a lot easier to... Uh, to, to it's manage possible. It. I'd have to check with China. Now, I know there's something similar. I don't know if it'd get right down to bolt holes and that kind of thing, but they did make a 3D rendering of the machine. It was more for a marketing thing. So, But I think it was drawn to scale, and they, that may have been based off some of that data. So let me see what I can find out for you, and let me make a note, and, let, and I'll let you know something about that. Oh, that'd be awesome, yeah. yeah. So having the same thing with the where to put my ductwork coming down my yeah. wall and stuff. Yeah. So I'll just call China and say, Hey, can I, you mind if I have all the plans to your machines? PDF. <laughs> yeah. we'll yeah, we're going to need accurate, you know, uh, manufacturing level drawings and details. <laughs> yeah. We've already got the schematics. So don't worry about that part. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. yeah that was you. something I was looking at doing just with uh, like the PDF of the schematics was throwing into AutoCAD or something like that. That way, if you uh, wanted to, uh, change it, redraw it, make notes, shuffle it around. It's not just annotating a PDF. Sure, sure. Awesome. Yeah, any any kind of thing like that that's that's in your wheelhouse is definitely something I'm interested in. So. Yep, exactly. And uh, uh, so I'll, I'll start doing that. I've started making me, and we'll say, an idiot's guide from going through all the details, all the information that's there you know, for the 51 that I'm doing and highlighting this. I need to make sure I've got this and stuff. So when I'm when I'm done with all that, um, I'm I'm gonna bring my wife out when we uh, get it and, and let her walk through, never seeing any of the information before, and make sure it makes sense to someone who's never seen it before. Right? You know, get get the uh, get the um the the test on it. Right, someone who's not technologically experienced with it that knows nothing about it, and if it makes sense there, then um hopefully uh, it, it should make sense to most anyone else. It sounds like a good plan. And then I and then I, I can give you all that when I'm done with it as well if it helps. Absolutely. I, I you know I'll, I'll take any information I can get. The more the better. So yep, especially absolutely. if it's concise, because sometimes I do have a tendency to, to to jump down rabbit holes and I forget to turn around and come back the other way. But <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> yep. So all right. Well um That's why I script my videos so that I can't uh go on ten minute tangents in every which direction. <laughs> yeah. I try to knock mine out and I get mad and erase it and start over a few times. I, well, I should probably script it a little bit. But I've found the, the harder I work at trying to make them look pro, the worse it is. Some of the best ones I've ever gotten, I just pull my cell phone out and just talk my way through stuff. And right. it's all shaky. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. Well, just but, use your fancy camera that you're using right now and your, your headphones. Out. The, yeah, the I'm gonna, value will go way up. You know. I'm going to work <laughs> on the, the polish a little bit this year. I mean, I've got a studio. I've got a, I've got a cinema camera. And sitting on a dolly, I mean, I'm totally set up. You know, I got multiple camera <laughs> angles, but um, I hardly, it's too much time for one person to set it up and use it and try to be in front of it at the same time. Yeah. So anyway, I'm evolving. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'll kick this one off. Uh, let me turn the record off. <laughs>